Good morning, everybody. Today is Friday, February 9th. We are heading to Atlanta BritCon 2024. It's happening this weekend, tomorrow, and Sunday. Uh, so yeah, I'm about to hop in the car and head out. I'm going to go meet my mom for lunch in Atlanta, and then I will be heading to Atlanta Brick Co. Uh, to meet up with Ryan and Menar, uh, and uh, do a little shopping, see what kind of cool stuff they have there. And then we'll be heading to the convention center after that to kind of uh, set up our table. I've got a few cool things that I wanted to bring to the convention, so I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride, and hopefully we'll just have uh, a great convention this weekend. And for lunch, we chose the Oink Joint. It was a barbecue place I'd never had before, but I would highly recommend. So I just got done eating lunch with my mom, and now I am headed to Atlanta Brick Co. to meet up with Ryan. It's my first time ever going to Atlanta Brick Co., so should be a great time. Really excited to see what all they have in store. We are finally here, Atlanta Brick Co., for the first time ever, at least for me. Oh, some random Mustang there. Have no idea who that might belong to. And Atlanta Brick Co. did not disappoint. Their selection was truly remarkable. From gift with purchases, to CMFs, to super rare and exclusive minifigures like Cloud City Boba Fett and Toy Fair Captain America. I found Ryan working on his latest installment of Ask M&R, and he asked me to be a part of it, so who was I to say no? After filming with Ryan, I got back to exploring the store, and I wasted no time in finding the Star Wars section. They easily had the most impressive selection of Star Wars minifigures of any LEGO resale store that I've ever visited. They also had a very solid lineup of sealed sets, as well as a seemingly endless supply of pre-built sets, which were housed in several display cases and took up quite a bit of space in this section of the store. With classics like the 2007 MTT and the Technic R2-D2, this store had something for everybody. And an item that was not for sale, but that was far too cool not to mention, was this 3D printed Queen Amidala brickheads that I saw. It was at this time that I also met Caleb, aka Blackwell Bricks, who was also in town from Alabama for the convention. After talking to Caleb, it was time to look at the Marvel section. And once again, I immediately headed for the minifigures. And as was the case with Star Wars, this felt like the widest variety of minifigures that I've seen from a LEGO resale store. They also had plenty of interesting sealed sets like the original Quinjet and the Infinity War Sanctum Sanctorum. And while it also wasn't for sale, this LEGO Superhero Spider-Man banner was pretty dope as well. And among their Brickheads collection was the Infinity War Iron Man Brickheads, which I will add to the collection at some point, just not today. So we just finished up with our shopping, got it all right here. Uh, so yeah, we're putting this up for the Whatnot stream in a couple days. So uh, hope everybody will be tuned in for that. Hopefully everybody signed up for the show. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys will pick up some cool stuff from the stream. Once I was done shopping, one of the employees took me and Ryan below the store for a little VIP behind the scenes tour. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That Valdor sick. There's like a code on it too. A little behind the scenes action of the like M&R vlog channel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this room right here was wild. This room contained pretty much anything and everything minifigures that wasn't currently on display on the showroom floor. Whether it was graveyard figures, which are figures that have issues that are too severe for them to ever see the light of day on the floor, or figures that they just had such a large quantity of that they couldn't fit in their display cabinets, this room pretty much had it all. And not a single theme was missing. From Star Wars, to Marvel, DC, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Friends, if it had minifigures, it was in here somewhere. And being the Boston sports fan that he is, you know Ryan had to find the Boston Celtics NBA players, like Paul Pierce, before we left. We could have spent way longer in here than we did, but we had to keep moving. Here we have the uh, Eminem Star Wars mosaic. And what was quite possibly the coolest thing that I saw in this store were these genuine movie props, these newspaper clippings from some of the MCU movies, like Spider-Man Homecoming. All right, so we're all done here at Atlanta Brick Co. There's Ryan. He's putting in the directions. Why are you the camera backwards? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got the selfie cam going. Yeah, so we're all done here. Uh, time to head over to the convention center into the hotel. There's so much traffic. <laughs> yeah, there's a, we just checked. There's a lot of traffic. So we're going to have a nice little drive getting back over to the convention center. So it should be fun. So uh, Ryan and I got back to the hotel. And uh, I went in and dropped off my stuff at the room. He had already checked in. So uh, I just had to drop my stuff off in the room. And now we are over at the convention center. Uh, we went inside already. I forgot my camera, so 
came back out to the car to get my camera uh, and also bring in a few things to set up our table for tomorrow. Uh, I've got my Iron Man Hall of Armor display that'll be at the table and then I'm also bringing in a couple other signs and uh, a few sets that I'll be giving away on the Whatnot stream on Sundays. And as you can see, already got a ton of stuff set up. Almost everybody's got their mocks and displays set up for the public days tomorrow. We got the yard sale going on tonight, so already got a ton going on. Just wanted to show tables all done. Got the little Hall of Armor mock here. Got some sets I'll be giving away on my Whatnot stream. Hopefully some people will be signing up. And then we got some stuff that Ryan brought. He's got his Death Star that he made based on the uh, Lego Globe set. He's got his gunship recolors here, Munalist, Wolfpack, standard gunship based on the Coruscant Guard gunship. And then, of course, he had to flex on us and bring all the uh, unreleased sets. Got the Tantive, the new R2-D2, Invisible Hand, Boarding Yavin, and then Malik and Fives, of course. So yeah, that's our table and uh, pretty much all good to go for tomorrow. Once we finished setting up our table, we checked out the yard sale, and we both found some good deals and made a couple pickups. And once we had finished browsing at the yard sale, it was time to browse around the convention center and check out everybody's mocks. We knew this would be our best opportunity to check out everybody's stuff without having to maneuver around countless other people during the public hours. I also knew I wanted to stay near our table for as much of the day as possible, at least on Saturday. That way I could answer questions if people had them about the Hall of Armor, and I could walk people through how to sign up for whatnot if they were interested in doing so. So I'm really glad we took this time to check out some of the incredible mocks that Atlanta BrickCon had to offer. After checking out a bunch of these mocks, we were invited to a women's professional volleyball game across the street at the Gas South Arena by one of Ryan's friends, Garrett. The two teams playing were the hometown Atlanta Vibe and the Grand Rapids Rise. Apparently, Garrett saw one of the players for the Grand Rapids Rise at the hotel the night before and had a love at first sight experience. So he wanted to come to the game and support his new crush. Ryan took this time to jump into a Wappy Bricks whatnot stream so he could pick up the original Technic buildable Droidica set so he can compare it to the one coming out later this year. Ryan ended up winning the Droidica and the team that Garrett's crush played for won the match. So everybody left happy. All right, so it's about 10.30 and uh, we're finally heading out of the conventions. Freedom. We're finally heading out. Off the clock. Uh, yeah, we're finally off the clock for the night, so uh, we're gonna head back to the hotel. I'm gonna list the rest of the stuff for the auction that I got at Atlanta Brick Co., so that'll be fun, and then we'll be getting ready for a long, exciting day tomorrow. And here is the minifigure lineup for the Whatnot stream that I was going to be having on Sunday. A few of these figures came from my personal collection, and the rest of them, like pretty much all the clone troopers, are ones that I picked up while I was at Atlanta Brick Co. My two biggest priorities were variety and affordability, and I feel like I knocked it out of the park. Good morning, everybody. It is now a Saturday morning, which means that it is public convention day number one. So, uh, yeah, I just got up and at him. I am headed down to eat some breakfast. Uh, Ryan's a little bit behind, but uh, I'm sure he'll be down shortly as well. I got one last sign finished up for our table last night. So, yeah, this will be going up and then... I guess our table will officially be complete and ready to go for the convention. So we are just starting up with a little bit of shopping here in the morning before things get too hectic. Uh, seeing some familiar faces. It's a block parties up in Indianapolis where I used to live. So great to see some familiar faces. And yeah, we're just gonna go around and uh, see what kind of cool stuff we can see today. And while it's a block party did have some really cool stuff, it felt like some of their prices were a little outrageous. Another vendor had cool items like Finch Dallow, the Chrome Stormtrooper, the Old Republic Zabrak Jedi, as well as the Tobey Maguire Wrestling Suit Spider-Man and Original Green Goblin. They also had a pretty impressive selection of more run-of-the-mill minifigures, and with decent prices as well. This ended up being one of the more popular vendors at the convention from what I gathered. Another vendor had the beautiful Queen Amidala minifigure for sale, but with that ask for price sign up front, I was scared to know how much they wanted for her. After touring all the vendors, it was time to return to our table, as the convention was starting to get very busy. And at least near our table, probably because Ryan was there, it stayed busy virtually the entire day. At some point before lunch, Dom found us, who I actually met at Brickworld two years ago. 
All right, so it's about 12.30, and uh, we're taking a little break to go get some lunch. Ryan came to stop by the Bricker Builds uh, to talk to a couple guys over here, and then we're gonna dip out and try and get some lunch. It's been nonstop so far. We've had a ton of people coming by the table, a ton of people coming to ask about the Hall of Armor and ask questions, a lot of compliments on it, so that's been really nice just to see that everyone's been loving the Hall of Armor, and obviously everybody's loving Ryan's new sets. So, uh, yeah, that's been a great time so far. And on our way out to the cafe, we ran into Jonathan, a.k.a. Mini Superheroes Today. I ended up having a barbecue pimento cheeseburger, and Ryan, as he did many times during this weekend, had cheese pizza and a Coke. After lunch, we returned to our table, and at one point, Danny Bob came by, so I got to pick her brain about her Scobo display cases. So it is uh, a little after 5, it's about 5.15, and we're kind of uh, wrapping up on day one here. As you guys can see, it's starting to thin out quite a bit. The public is starting to get kicked out of here. So yeah, we're wrapping up with day one. And uh, yeah, it's been crazy so far. Uh, been on my feet a lot, so I'm looking forward to getting to kind of relax and hopefully wind down a little bit the rest of the day. Uh, I think I'm gonna try and head over to the Lego store. Uh, I've got some birthday money that I would like to use, so I'm gonna try and pick up a couple of the new battle packs and uh, we'll see what else they have. We did go to the Lego store, but they did not have the new battle packs. They did, however, have Duck, Ricks, and Robert. And it was great to meet these guys. So it's a little after 6.30, and uh, we are at a dinner for all of the uh, exhibitors and vendors. So, pretty sweet. We got the, I was gonna say, we got the reserved seating. Yep. We did not accidentally bid on this, though. I only... <laughs> Ryan's checking out the uh, gold C-3PO that Maddie's got at his auction. We're trying to see. It's at currently at 2,000, so big ticket item there. But yeah, we just sat down and uh, we're about to have some dinner. So we are all done with dinner. Uh, basically, we had dinner. Uh, they did some raffle giveaways, we did some trivia, which is actually a ton of fun. Uh, I've got a picture that I'll throw in there uh, at the end, but uh, Ryan and I both ended up doing pretty well in the trivia. Uh, he finished top five, I was top 10. I think I finished in eighth out of over 100 people that were playing, so uh, that was a lot of fun actually doing the trivia. So now we're heading back down to the uh, convention hall and they're going to uh, get started with the light show in a few minutes where they're gonna turn out all the lights in there and then all of the mocks that have uh, light installations will get to shine. When all the lights got cut off and all of these mocks had their light installations turn on, it was like walking into a brand new convention. There were so many mocks that I feel like I didn't really notice during the day that finally got their time to shine at night. Like this Disney castle and this Monkey Kids City of Lanterns type mock. There were also some builds that I did notice during the day that were made even cooler now. Like this Mars mission base. But far and away the most impressive mock at the convention in my humble opinion was New Hashima. The Instagram page for this mock says that it took 70 people in seven different countries to put this all together. This mock was the centerpiece of the convention. Light installations, sound installations, technic power functions, hundreds of minifigures, New Hashima had it all, and then some. So I am back at the hotel. Uh, we are done checking out the uh, light show where they, they cut off all the lights and uh, had all the light installations turn on so that was super cool to see some of those mocks uh, lit up and Ryan is uh, heading out to a party um, that we were invited to uh, I'm just uh, I'm a little beat a little tired so I'm gonna take this opportunity to try and get ahead on a little bit of sleep because we're gonna be driving back to Birmingham after the convention is over tomorrow um, try and show you guys some of the things that I have picked up along the way and then we'll be off to bed and uh, getting ready for day two of the public convention. So first up we have the new uh, Batlord from the most recent CMF series. Thought he was super cool. Um, so yeah, had to pick him up. Then we've got uh, our Rhino minifigure from one of the uh, Spider-Man sets. I had pretty much all the other minifigures from that set except for the Rhino. So wanted to pick him up. We've got a uh, Iron Man from the Iron Man mech. Uh, I wanted to have one in the Hall of Armor and then one to put back into the mech, so yeah, I just need to pick up a second one of him just so I can have everything completed. Uh, picked up a couple Spider-Man figures that I still needed, and then Major Von Reg, love this figure. Um, didn't really want to pick up the whole ship, just really wanted the minifigure, so 
was able to get Von Reg from Atlanta Brick Co. And then we also have this uh, gold Cloud City Boba Fett minifigure that was done by uh, Blumasaurus. And he just gifted this to me during the convention. So shout out to you. Uh, super cool minifigure here. And I believe he said this is limited to uh, 1 in 30. So yeah, super cool gift. I super appreciate it. And yeah, this is kind of the haul that we have from the convention so far. Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday, which means it is the last day uh, of the convention. So Ryan and I just checked out of the hotel. We came to drop off some stuff in our cars, and then we will be walking over to the convention center to get all set up for our last day. And just like Saturday, Sunday was packed. But Sunday was game day for me, because at 12 o'clock, I was going to be going live on Whatnot for my next stream. So we just finished up with our Whatnot auction. Uh, it went great, a ton of people came out, got to buy some really cool stuff. Congratulations to all of the giveaway winners on your big wins. So now we're gonna take a little break and uh, go get some lunch and just walk around the convention center and make sure that I can just take in all the sweet builds that everybody brought and you know, just make sure I don't miss anything. And I'm so glad that I made one last trip around the convention hall because I found even more incredible builds, like this Spider-Man multiverse build and this dope UCS style Batcave. I also saw this modular style classic space space station. This was another project put together by multiple builders and the Blacktron section was easily my favorite. And one last build that really blew me away was this M-Tron Dynamo double lift hill double loop roller coaster. The power functions installed in this coaster allowed it to run two sets of cars simultaneously, non-stop. It was definitely my favorite build from day two. So it's a little after three o'clock. There's just under an hour left in the convention. And I came out to my car to bring some stuff to put in there just because I knew I was gonna have to make two trips. And I didn't wanna have to make two trips when everybody else is also trying to leave all at the same time. So uh, yeah, I decided to bring some stuff to drop off in the car. That way when the convention's over and we're ready to head out, I can just make one trip and then I'll be good to go. And uh, yeah, then we're gonna be heading back to Birmingham and trying to get there in time to catch opening kickoff for the Super Bowl. So that should be fun. And in this final hour, I got to stop by and see Martin, AKA Brick Snaps, and all the wonderful builds that he brought to the convention. So it's about 3.50. Uh, they just came on the intercom a couple minutes ago at about 3.45 to tell everyone that there's 15 minutes left in the convention. So basically start wrapping it up making final purchases and then uh, you know letting all the uh, exhibitors know that we can start winding down so uh, we started to pack up our stuff I like I said I already made a trip out to the car just uh, helped Ryan to finish packing up a lot of his stuff uh, so yeah basically as soon as it hits four o'clock we'll be ready to roll and uh, head out of here so we got his gunships in the first bin we got his, uh, his new unreleased sets going in the small bin up there. You can see with the R2 and the Tantive. What's up guys? And then his Death Star in here. So we are all done with the convention. Uh, we came back to our cars, we loaded everything up and now we're about to hit the road and head back to Birmingham. We should still make it uh, by the first quarter. So that's the goal, make it by the first quarter. Hopefully we haven't missed too much by the time we get there.